Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today is pretty exciting because I have a 2024 BMW M3 CS for review. And I want to thank the good folks over at BMW San Rafael here in Marin County for putting it on loan to me just for the purposes of this review. Now, that being said, I do own a G80 M3 myself. Mine is a manual base version, and I am curious to see how much better this car might be versus mine. So I am gonna take a look at the details. We're gonna take it for a drive, and then I'm gonna give you my opinion. So all that's coming up right now. Alright, so here we are in the cabin of the G80 M3 CS, and look, it's a very familiar layout to my car, right? I just have the base M3, but I have a 23, so that comes with this long extended uh, double screen. Um, it has a similar wheel to this in terms of the center part, although mine is leather wrapped, not Alcantara. I do actually prefer Alcantara. I know a lot of people feel like it's one of those things that's good for a while, but then over time gets a little gross. I think that's true, but I think it depends on your hands. Like if you are the kind of person that gets sweaty palms, don't buy the CS, or at least don't get a CS style wheel with Alcantara. Just get the regular leather, you'll be happy. Uh, in terms of the rest of the cabin, it's really familiar. I mean, you got leather in all the same spots, especially if you have the extended leather like this car does. Um, but one major difference, of course, it's this center console uh, or transmission tunnel, whatever you want to call it. Totally carbon fiber all the way back. Um, you do get a cubby here for your phone with a charging port. Uh, you also have a, a wireless charging uh, pad. You do get um, a little cubby here for just things. But other than that, it's pretty bare bones. This is designed to sort of evoke more performance oriented mindset and therefore you get a little less luxury just as a latent function of that but everything else is pretty much the same i mean you get your uh, heads up display uh same mirror same everything else you do get uh red stitching built into the seats both front and back of course you got the cs logo on the back of these carbon fiber buckets um you know and other than that i mean this is just a nice place to be and let me also talk about the carbon fiber buckets for one second. You know, these seats uh, pretty much just come with the CS, but if you option them out in the regular M3, whether you're talking about the base or the competition, there is a debate online whether or not you should get these or not. Well, here's my two cents. Number one, I think resale value will be better with these seats uh, in a regular M3. And number two, as far as like performance bucket seats go, these are pretty fantastic. I mean, the backs do adjust, so you can go back or forward, right? And they go up and down, and you can get them heated. You can't get them cooled, but you can get them heated. So they really are still kind of luxury, even though they're made for performance. And in terms of like how I sit in the car, I mean, I'm 6'1", maybe 6'2", I'm about 225, 230 pounds. I'm not a small guy and I've got lots of headroom, perfect to wear a helmet. I'm sitting nice and low in the car. I feel like I'm in the car, not on the car. There's a pretty big distinction there. And you know, this wheel with the Alcantara to me, just it just really finishes off like the, the real sporty nature of this car. This is like, I know it's generic to say it, but it really is like as close as 
an M3 will get to a Porsche GT3. So there is luxury in here, um, not a lot, but it, it is more performance, performance geared and it shows. Um, I think driving this thing will be interesting uh, in comparison to my car, but overall, I do think this is a really, really nice place to be and I kind of see where the money went. You know, just off the cuff, I can just tell you, this thing feels pretty nice. I mean, I'm going out of driver right now, no scraping, nice little burble out the back. I mean, this thing has got a lot going for it. It's, it's one of these rare cars where a lot of things come together in the right way. So for example, you just gotta look at like how easy it is for this thing to be a daily driver. It's a performance car and yet you can drive it every day. Like it really makes you feel like it's not gonna beat you up. And I don't know, I mean, it's a nice place to be. Like inside here, I feel like this is a nice place to be. Also notice in the cabin right now, it's actually pretty quiet. Now, if I step on it, hopefully we get a little bit more engine sound. Let's check it out. Yep, a lot more sound. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing gets up pretty damn quick. By the way, you know, I mean, you're not going to be upset with the performance of this car. It's it really does move and um, yeah, wow, that was a big number <laughs> really quickly. Um, I would actually say that this car is more track car than regular car, but it it's just one of these vehicles that does everything so well, so balanced. I, I think that's what kind of makes me interested in this thing. This is not by any stretch of the imagination a regular M3. The, you could just tell they're different. If you blindfolded me, put me in this car and said, okay, what car are you in? I would be able to tell you instantly this is a CS because I can just tell by the way this thing steers, the nose just dives into any corner. I mean, like, I'm not white knuckling the steering wheel by any stretch, but I can tell that if I want to turn the wheel just a little bit, it is gonna go exactly where I want it to go. There's no, there's no like buffer, right? With like a regular car, you might not notice it, but like in a regular car, you turn and there's this, you know, little bit of time that goes by where from the moment you turn the steering wheel to the moment where the tires turn, there's like this little buffer and it's, it, we're talking milliseconds, but in this, there's almost nothing. It's like you turn and the car is already doing it. So you've got to really have your moves planned out the faster you go, but it feels incredible. Oh man, this thing is, this thing is something else. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking this. <laughs> Damn it. I was really hoping to not like this. You know, the problem I have with Porsche cars sometimes is that they give you the illusion of daily drivability. The reality is though, to have a car with really high performance and then also be something that you can just drive every single day, it's just a very difficult thing to balance. But this car, this car seems to do it really well. I mean, I've got it in almost all the sportiest settings minus the uh, suspension, it's just in comfort. I don't think that's the right word for it. <laughs> I'd probably call it um, bearable, uh, but it's absolutely what this car needs. And on a racetrack, I can't even imagine how good this thing must feel in a perfectly smooth track with all, all the settings dialed all the way up. It's gotta be uh, just beautiful. Yeah, these Cup 2s make a big difference. I mean, I'm rolling on the stock 4Ss and even though they're tuned for the car and the chassis, they're not like this. This is this is grip level and, you know, uh, confidence inspiring performance like I've never seen out of the box. Oh yeah, that's so good. 
good lord. Yeah. Woo. That's some good thrust. Anybody who buys this car is not going to be upset with the amount of power that this car can make. The thrust is amazing. These, the shifting on this car, I mean, I've just got an automatic because I don't even think I need to go into manual mode. I mean, they're just so crisp. The transmission knows when it's supposed to shift. It's not gonna hold you back at all. It's just saying, do you wanna click the button or do you want me to do it? That's it. There's really no difference. I think in most of these performance cars, when I drive them, I usually go into manual because I know the tuning of that transmission isn't really gonna keep up with how my brain wants to shift. But in this thing, snap. Done. It doesn't care. It just goes, no, this is the gear we got to be in. We're going to it, <laughs> which is amazing. And that does not sound terrible either. BMW knows how to really make an inline six sound amazing. And uh, man, this is, this is definitely impressive. So I've owned quite a few M3s in my day. I've had two E46 M3s. I've had an E92, I've had an E90 M3, one in DCT, one in stick shift. Um, I now own a G80 M3, and the list goes on. I've also had two 1Ms. So I've got a pretty healthy history with BMW, and I can tell you right now, this car has greatness in it. This is like a cultivation of all of the greatest parts of those cars kind of meshed into one. And I'm not just saying that to be cliche, I'm really not. I can just tell by the way this thing drives that the engineers were like, kind of let off their leash a little bit. Create a car and in and, and all these categories, make it to the best of our ability in a way that it's not gonna make the car cost $500,000. Make the steering great, check. Make the transmission shift great, check. Make the suspension amazing, check. Make the handling amazing, check. Give the motor the right level of power it deserves from the factory, check, check, check. The rear differential on this car feels incredible. It's like it knows exactly how to manage the power perfectly. You can go into all wheel drive in this. I mean, this is a mind blowing car, guys. Like really is. I think it's an incredible value, especially at sticker. That's the key to all of this. Buy this car, but buy it at sticker. All right, guys, so that concludes our drive in the M3 CS. Again, I wanna thank the folks over at San Rafael BMW for loaning the car out, and I'm actually gonna put in the comments below the contact that you can reach out to if you're interested in buying this particular car. And on top of that, I'm gonna give you my opinion on this. Is this worth the extra money over a regular M3? Well, the answer is kind of depends. Um, I wish it was a straight answer, but for me it's not because you could take the extra money and put it into a regular car and have better performance than you do on this. But then the answer is yes, because guess what? This is gonna depreciate today much less than a regular M3. And at the same time, in the future, it has the potential to rock it up in value. Uh, I mean, it, just base, base that answer on what do we got down the road, right? In terms of electric cars, climate change, regulations and laws that are still being developed today, it means that these straight six turbos and other cars like it for performance-oriented drivers and enthusiasts like us, are not gonna be able to get this anymore. Therefore, I can see this becoming a really good buy, but just do me a favor, do not buy this over sticker if you can. If we keep giving into ADM, they keep offering cars with ADM. Our dollars are the ones that dictate whether or not that's a trend that continues or not. So really think about that and uh, I mean, whatever. It's your money, do what you want, but that would be my two cents. All right guys, all that being said, great car. I enjoyed every minute of it. Thank you again to everybody watching at this point. Questions and comments, put them down below. And I will catch you guys on the next one.